This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Welcome back to the house. So this is week three, and last week we pulled out all the old galvanized plumbing. We also made a major decision to move the furnace up in the attic so we could save a bunch of space in here and build out a pantry. In the kitchen, this week, we are working on the biggest job, which is to remove this wall. This is gonna change the most about the house. It's also a load-bearing wall, so we have to do a bunch of structural changes, and for that, let's go up into the attic. So right now I'm standing right above the kitchen wall that we're gonna be removing. On this side is the kitchen, on this side is the living room, and in between we have ceiling joists that overlap that wall. And in order to get a beam up in here, we're gonna have to cut through these ceiling joists. This structure right here is a roof support. It keeps the roof from sagging under like extreme loads, things like snow or a lot of wind. We can remove these temporarily and put them back in, but the joists, when they're cut, they hold the weight of all the plaster on the ceiling. So those need to be supported while we work on that. In order to do that, we need to build a temporary wall on both the living room side and the kitchen side. Just when we thought we were done with the plaster work, we realized that we should probably cut back this ceiling while everything's cleared out on the floor below. Before we bring out any tools, we're gonna clean up all the plaster. And yes, that does mean that we have to cut a bit of the cove. I've been working really hard to save this cove, but this is going to be flat ceiling, so we have to cut this chunk out. I've been super curious how this cove was constructed and after I took a hammer to it, I was surprised at how strong it was. It was built against a two by four with some metal edging at the bottom and then chicken wire wrapped up to the ceiling, which they then pressed the plaster into. It definitely put up a fight, but we were able to get it down without damaging any of the rest of the ceiling. The old exhaust vent came out easy and so did that two by four that was on the wall. Yeah, you yeah, beautiful. So we're about to build the temporary walls. Before doing that, I need to slide the beam in here. The header needs to be cut to length because if we build the walls, we're not gonna be able to actually get the header in here. And in order to figure out where the header is gonna be, how long it is, I'm looking at the floor and I, I know that there's a floor joist right here that goes down into a beam. So the construction of this house is called post and beam. It means that there are joists that run to beams and those beams go down to posts and those posts go into the ground with concrete blocks. Now you want the header to end on as as much foundation as you can. So the header is gonna go straight down into one of the floor joists, which is gonna go into the beam, which is gonna go into those blocks. So this is the point that we want to cut the header to link to. For the beam, I decided to use a 4x12 of Douglas fir. This is upsized from what my engineer recommend, which is a 4x10. It's a nine and a half foot span. We'll go more into the logistics of the beam in a minute, but once this is cut, we can start working on the support walls. With the beam cut, we can lay out a four x four and a two by six. These are gonna be the temporary top and bottom plates. We're laying these out so that we can get a measurement for the two by fours that go in between. All right, 91 and a half. Yeah. Well, uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna overcut them so that we are gonna wedge them up. Okay. So I'll probably cut them at 92, but then we can hammer them into place. And they're gonna sit like this. It'll look a little funky, but it, it'll put pressure upward. Okay. So it'll almost be like a spring that's pushing up into the ceiling. So big thank you to my buddy Luis, who has been working on this project from the beginning, and he's been working at Almfab, helping out with the website and a whole bunch of other things behind the scenes for the last six months. He's got a whole bunch of remodel experience. I don't think he's ever removed a load-bearing wall before, so I'm taking the lead on this, but it's been really handy to have him in the house. It's literally the only reason I've been able to do as much as I have in the last few weeks. Rock solid. I think so too. That's not going anywhere. Okay, let's do the other side. 
These temporary walls are really easy to put in. Basically, you cut extra long two by fours and wedge them in. The corners of them latch into the four by four at the bottom and the two by six at the top. The two by six at the top is to distribute the load on the ceiling so you don't break the plaster. And on that note, you also don't want to hammer them in too hard. You just want them to basically be there so that they stay in place. And then once you put the cross braces in, they become incredibly strong. All right, that comes the scary part. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right. On both sides of this beam, I need a 4x4 post to carry the load down to the foundation. In order to fit it in, I have to remove some of the lumber that's in the way, but fortunately, the way this was framed, there's a nice open spot for it on the left. And on the right, we'll carry the load down to that joist that's in the floor. We removed the 2x4 that was sitting there because it was cut for a floor vent. So we'll add that 2x4 back in and bring it all the way down to the ground. Got it. Now I messed something up here. I should not have cut this top plate, but we'll get to that in a minute. Thanks to this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible to more people. Therapy can be a game changer, helping us navigate the ups and downs in our lives. Whether you've tried therapy before or you're curious about how it could benefit you now, BetterHelp is a great option. Personally, I believe that therapy can transform lives. It's given lots of people in my life valuable tools to approach their challenges, and I've seen it make a real difference for the people close to me. I understand that finding the right therapist can be challenging, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. That's where BetterHelp comes in. They connect you with licensed therapists who are ready to help you right from the comfort of your own home. If you don't click with the therapist you're assigned to, BetterHelp makes the process simple and hassle-free to try someone new. Whether you're dealing with clinical mental health issues like depression or anxiety, or you're simply going through a tough time, therapy can provide you with the support and guidance you need. I highly recommend considering online therapy with BetterHelp. It could be the first step towards a better quality of life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash michaelolm for 10% off your first month of therapy. Thanks BetterHelp. Now let's get back to the house. The old wall's now been removed, but there's a lot to do to rebuild. The floor was in pretty rough shape because it had this floor vent in the middle of it as well as electrical drilled out. What I ultimately decided to do was to remove some of the subflooring and patch it with some plywood. When it comes to making an exact patch in drywall or a subfloor, I find it's easier to cut the floor to match the patch than the patch to match the floor. These oscillating multi-tools are great for this because you can trace around a patch that's slightly larger than you need and sneak up on a perfect fit. Once trimmed, I marked out where the joist locations were, slid the panel in, and could screw it down. By the way, this Rockler tool bag is super handy. I've had it for a while. They're on sale right now, and they're really nice to keep things organized on the job site. Next, I used a straight edge to line up a new bottom plate. I'm leaving this bottom plate long so that I can trim it back once the 2x4 and 4x4 are in their final location. It wasn't until I started wedging in this 2x4 that I realized that I may have made a mistake. Top one. Yeah, go up first. There you go. Right. We're not. Uh, 
We're not fully on the joist. I wonder if we space it. Yeah, I think we put it like a face like a two by four. Yeah, because then we'll be like dead center over this over the joist. Yeah. Oh man, we shouldn't have cut that top plate. Listen, we can still fix it. I think we fix it. Okay, let's fix it. So I made a bit of a mistake when we were cutting the top plate. I should have left the the top top plate long so that it could catch the four by four underneath. It's okay, we've got a repair solution. We're just gonna have to cut out a section and tie it back in. I'm not sure this makes a lot of structural difference, but it's just gonna be easier to hold on to the four by four as we put the beam up and make sure that it's locked in really nice and tight. The repair was pretty straightforward. I cut the end of the board with an oscillator, trimmed out the nails from underneath, and slipped in a new board. This first board was, was not tight enough because it was new lumber. New lumber is not the same size as old lumber. And so I used a scrap piece of old lumber. We wedged it up with the two by four stud and screwed it in with structural screws. Now that the stud was wedged into place, I could nail it off at the bottom and check it for level at the top. Once it was level, I nailed that off too and we could start prepping the 4x4 post. What we discovered when we did the test fit is that this 4x4 post needs to be blocked out just a little bit so that it can land perfectly center in the middle of the joist. So I cut a couple studs, nailed them off, and then it was ready to go into place. When I'm replacing structural members, I always like to cut them a little bit long so that I have to hammer them in. This ensures that they are fully bearing on the structure above. It may slightly lift the ceiling as we go, but only slightly, and I know that it's not gonna sag at all. By the way, this Festool oscillator is brand new to me and I am impressed. This footage is not sped up. This is how fast it cuts through a stud. This thing is a beast. I know, you just cut through that like crazy. I mean, it's a new blade, but still, I don't feel like my other ones cut like that with a new blade. With the right wall pretty much done, the left wall needed its post. And again, I hammered this into place. One thing about this 4x4 is it had a little crown in it. So I did use my Rockler one-handed bar clamps to pull it tight to the wall. If you do happen to be doing some framing, I highly recommend throwing some of these in your tool bag. They are insanely handy. Good? Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> Yeah. With both posts in their final location, we can strike a line all the way across and I can mark out where we're gonna cut all the joists. Meanwhile, Luis was in the attic removing those roof supports, so we've got plenty of room to move around. After that, the next move is to cut out the notches so we can slip in the beam. Now is the moment of truth, and there's no putting those joists back, so hopefully my calculations were correct. Okay, so it's also fit this open four by four. Yep. We'll just put it, we need to put it over that joist. Okay. Okay. You want to put the ladder? The ladder. And then we're going to slide it to me. Oh, we're so close. There we go. Okay, it's going to drop pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. so I have about oh, an eighth of an inch right now. Okay. One, two, three. 
Oh, so close. Hold on, I can lift this end up and I think it'll go. Wow, oh, what's it caught on? I mean, Michael, I think you can hammer it in. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's Okay, there. let's do that. I'll get, I'm gonna crawl up in the attic and we'll hammer it in. Right, this I'm thing's ready. gonna drop in like two seconds. All right, I'm ready. That's, that's awesome. It was a massive relief to have the beam up and all that's left to do is to hang the joists. And for that, I'm gonna be using joist hangers. There's definitely some prep that you need to do. I turned my Rockler one-handed bar clamp inside out so I could use it in the pushing mode. Meanwhile, Luis from underneath was raising it up with a two by four wedged up underneath the joist. This way it was at the correct level and also completely square. I'm sure there's some of you asking why I'm using screws on these hangers. These are the correct screws that are slated by the manufacturer of the hardware. They are structural screws, not normal screws. You can't just use any old screws. You should always check the sheet provided by the manufacturer to, to make sure you use the correct nails and screws. For the toenails, I'm using 16D sinkers. Again, they were slated by the manufacturer. Thank you. Installing the hardware went pretty smooth, except for in the corners where space is pretty restricted. I cut a nail to the outside wall, and fortunately with a rocker clamp and Luis hammering from underneath, we were able to get the hanger in. Nice. Okay. Nice work. The screws went in surprisingly easy as well. I was worried that my drill wouldn't fit, but it managed to fit perfectly. And for those last awkward toenails, a palm nailer did the trick. So we just noticed that a lot of these aren't holding any weight anymore, which is a good sign. It's kind of wild. Like that one's completely loose. We still weren't completely done in the attic. We need to reattach those roof supports and Luis cut them down below while I nailed them in up above. I double checked to make sure that the rafters hadn't sagged at all when we removed the supports, but they were actually, if anything, it's higher. Sitting a little bit higher because I, I imagine the rest of the roof had sagged around the supports that were ex existing before. These are pretty simple to install. I basically cut them a little bit shorter than the last set so that they could sit on top of the beam and uh, nailed them to each other so they're nice and strong. With the roof and the ceiling completely supported, now we can remove those temporary walls and see what this room looks like. here that was just kind of open framing and so we added that in sunk it all back to the wall so this we can just lay drywall on flat here and have a nice corner wow oh it looks so good this is like when we enter from the front door yeah you know you look back into the breakfast nook and like yeah. you know the peninsula will be there it'll just have so much more light so much more light to go through yeah.
Well, it's really nice to finally show this space to Ashley, like what's been in my head for years now, finally coming to fruition, and this is becoming the kitchen that we want, which is awesome. I filmed that footage about a week ago. I'm doing a week on, week off thing. People have been asking Michael why, and you're saying week three when it's actually been six weeks. It's because I have to edit these videos and do all the behind the scenes, all fab things. But in the meantime, I've had uh, people out here. I had uh, Tim Euler from Awesome Framers. If you don't follow him, you should go check him out. He's a professional framer out here, has a great channel, which has helped me learn a lot about framing. And uh, he came by to look and see how I'd done. He uh, analyzed my work and I've got that full video up on Patreon now. Big thank you to the Patreon supporters. Big thank you to BetterHelp for supporting my channel, sponsoring this video. There's a lot left to do. There's uh, some cool stuff coming down the pike, so I can't wait to share that with you in the next video. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, I even use 16s for the uh, double shear nails, the toenails. Yeah. That's what they called for. Whoa. We read, okay. You so can tell we... Michael's not a framer <laughs> because he read the catalog. <laughs>